Coach, it was a tough weekend for the Broncos, uh, getting swept up in Denver, which is always a, a tough place to play, especially when they have the talent that they do. Um, you know, what do you take from the weekend? And then, you know, how do you rebuild uh, for St. Cloud State this weekend? Well, I think, for, first of all, Denver's a real quality hockey club, and, and they had lost four in a row, and they came out super hungry on Friday night, and we pushed back and had some chances at 4-3 to make it 4-4, and uh, we didn't finish. They finished, and we didn't, and that, that was kind of the story of the game. Now, they controlled some of it. They put a lot of pressure on us. Um, you know, on Saturday night, I thought we were basically, honestly, in control of that hockey game. I think shots were 17-8 or 17-9. We were up 2-1. Um, two things turned that game. Uh, uh, too many men on the ice – call and a, a, a face-off violation call that really turned momentum in that game. They got a couple late, but, uh, you know, it is what it is. Like I said, they're a real good opponent, and, and uh, we got to make sure that we know that's coming every week, and we got to be ready for it. St. Cloud, uh, very similar in that they brought back a lot of their senior class. You know, what have you seen out of them so far this season? Mature, deep, talented, hard. Like all the things you want of a championship team, um, they went to the Frozen Four last year. They returned everyone essentially, and they added uh, the best defenseman out of Minnesota. Uh, I mean, the Perk kid is a star. Um, so it, their decor is better than it was last year. Um, they're deeper than they were last year. I mean, it's a real quality opponent. Drew Warad had a, a goal and assist in, in both your games in Denver. He's now uh, tied for, I believe, it's fourth in the country at like one point six points per game. Um, how? How has he been able to, to generate so much offense for you? Well, Drew's a real smart player, and he plays real hard. So I think he is, his attention to detail and his ability to uh, repeat his performance night in and out, night in and night out, shift in, shift out. Um, and, he's, and he's performed well in the power play as well. So he's got a real quality line with, with Ethan Frank and, and, uh, and Gallant over there. So that, that line's produced some offense for us for sure. Speaking of some of those you know, leading scorers in the country, Carter Savoie of Denver up there as well, obviously uh, scored four goals against you this weekend. How hard is it to, to, to slow down a talent like that? Well, he's got a world-class stick. I mean, that's all there is to it. The kid can shoot it in the net. Uh, he's done it his whole life. He's going to keep doing it at the next level. I think he's got a chance to play in the National Hockey League. So, obviously, he got shut down the, the week before against North Dakota. He came out real determined, played a great weekend of hockey against us. Um, uh, looking... Uh, ahead this week at, at St. Cloud State, like you mentioned, super deep. Is there anyone really that, that stands out on their roster like Savoie? Well, I think you, you, you look at the two Finns, I think they're pretty elite players. The, the meet in kid is, uh, you know, he was a rookie of the year last year in our conference, and I think he's only gotten better. Um, but, again, it's it's a deep um, lineup. If you shut one line down, the, the, the next line's been right there for him all year. So they have depth of scoring. They have depth on D, and, and their goaltending has been real good. First year, special teams always critical to the game of hockey. How are they coming along? Your penalty kill was awesome early in the season, and you know, I know you were doing some work on the power play. How's that all coming together as you move into uh, mid-November? Well, I think you know our power play got one each night last uh, week, and we had some, several chances there. Again, I look at the process there. It wasn't good enough there for about three games as far as our entries into the zone. I think we've cleaned that up a little bit, and and just movement and pucks at the net. And I think you know it's it's like Novocaine. It, over time, it'll it'll set in and work. You know, you just got to get pucks and bodies down there. Than that, I don't think there's a lot of magic. We got uh, some guys that can really shoot the puck with Ronnie and and. Uh, and Mikey Joy, all the weapons up top, and, and we just have to deliver as many pucks as we can in that. And, and on the penalty kill side, I think we've done a real good job. Obviously, uh, Denver got a couple on us, but, uh, you know, it's a real quality unit, too. You have to give them some credit. Got a little illness going through the team. Uh, how do you see the week developing with all of that going on? Day by day. You know, we're uh, – like you mentioned, we're down several bodies. Um had a lightish practice today. We'll more monitor. We don't exactly know what we have for tomorrow. Um, it'll be you know day by day. Non-COVID, so uh, it's just a matter of working through it. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think there's a lot of flu going around. Um, you know, all the state of Michigan right now. I think we're certainly hit by some of that. Um, again, we'll just we'll just monitor it. We'll listen to the doctors, and you know, if they say a guy can play, he can play. If they say he can't, he can't. We'll move forward with what we have. How about Brandon Bussey? How did he perform on the weekend as you uh, look at the game tapes? I thought Brandon was solid. I, I think that, that um, s several of the goals that went in, I, I can think of three off the top of my head, were either two on O's or two on ones that they made nice plays to the back door that Brandon didn't have a chance on. He made some you know world class saves for us for sure. And I think uh, for him to perform better, we need to perform better in front of him. 
All right, and your decor, I mean, it's a little depleted. <laughs> How do you move forward there? Well, you know, we've been depleted from the from the drop of the puck with Jared Kucherik out and, and, and Nick Strom out and, and Aiden Falp was out. He's been in, in and out. That's three of our you know, le- defensemen on the left side. So we, we've been patchwork a little bit back there throughout the year. Aiden, uh, he wasn't able to play last weekend. And, you know, he's a he's a rock back there for us and a huge part of our decor. Um, you know, kudos to Cam Knubel who filled in on D last last week. And I thought Cam did a real nice job keeping it simple, moving it out, um, and, and really taking some time back there away from the other guys. Got another highly ranked opponent in Lost and Ice Arena. The place should be rocking both Friday and Saturday. No, we expect uh, great crowds here, and that's that's what Lawson Arena is all about. It's one of the hardest buildings to play in for a reason, and and uh, you know we're excited for the weekend. Thanks, Coach. Thanks, guys. Hi, Josh. Uh, Denver is always a tough place to play for the Broncos, and the flu makes it a little tougher. I guess just talk about the weekend, and you know wh- what do you take from it? Yeah, uh, obviously they play really well at home, um, and we've been uh, pretty good on the road this year, so. You know, we had the lead both nights. Uh, frustrating to come away uh, the weekend the way we did, but um, you know, we could sit here and make excuses. But uh, bottom line is, we just have to play better. Uh, two goals and two straight series for you. Things were a little slow to start. You know, you still got your points with the assists, but you know, I guess talk about your line and and how it's evolved and and you know, getting your scoring touch back. Uh yeah, I think uh, uh, it's been a little different uh with different players uh some of the weekends and now we're starting to find a little chemistry there but um you know just trying to do the right things play the right way and uh you know if you're getting chances that's usually a good sign and I think I've been getting chances and now they're just uh going in so I want to keep doing that and uh try to help the team any way I can you got another super talented opponent uh this upcoming weekend uh with St. Cloud State heading in here to Kalamazoo um what do you what do you think it takes to to go at a team with as much talent as that and, and bring them down? Uh, I think we just have to play our game. Uh, we've proven that um, <clears throat> we can play with the best teams in the nation this year. Uh, you know, every every weekend in this league is tough. No matter what, you got to play a full game. Um, you know, we learned uh, that this weekend uh, that you got to play sixty minutes. So that's what it's going to take. It's going to take sixty minutes. All four lines. Every D and a, a solid goaltending. Yeah, uh, your your head coach mentioned, you know, the team's dealing with uh, some illness right now. He, he talked about um, having to sort of shift some players into different roles. How hard is that to uh, to adjust, even even if it's you know a, a teammate who has to do something new? Uh, you know, I think um, the mentality that you have to take if you're uh, being shifted into a new role is. Uh, you just got to be ready to go, right? Like that's uh, if if a guy who hasn't been playing is going to be put uh, into the lineup, he's just got to uh, be prepared. And I think that's uh, everybody is on our team. We know we all compete in practices and push each other uh, to be better. So uh, I have no doubt that whoever is inserted, if there's uh, some illnesses or whatever, uh, is going to be ready to go and, and provide uh, energy and do what they have to do. You guys have an impressive senior class. How's it been leading this uh, group of Broncos as you go at this tough league night in and night out? Uh, it's been fun. You know, there's uh, we've got a great group of guys. The young guys are really uh, open to uh, learning and, and wanting to just be a sponge and soak up everything they can. So uh, that's been a real cool experience uh, that way. And, you know, it's um, – something I think we're used to at this point in our college careers. Um, and, uh, you know, taking the experiences that we've all had in our four previous years of competing in this league um, and just trying to uh, lead by example and, and show what it takes to uh, be successful um, is something uh, we all take pride in. You are one of those guys that decided to come back, work on an advanced degree and – Play some more hockey. Pretty happy with that choice. Now that the season is uh, into mid-November. Absolutely, yeah. Wouldn't uh, wouldn't have it any other way with the uh, option to come back and and uh, what we have here and what it what it can be and what we're trying to make it. One hundred percent. Special teams always integral part of the game. Uh, power play 
struggling there for a little bit. How's that coming together? Yeah, you know, I think um, we've had uh, some good looks on the power play, and they they just haven't gone in and, at certain times, and and that's starting to figure itself out a little bit. Um, you know, it it doesn't help with you know illnesses where you've got guys coming in and out of the lineup and kind of shifting around roles on uh, units or whatever. But um, you know, I think that's just uh, something we have to continue to work on. And um, as far as the power play goes and the penalty kill. Um, you know, we, same deal. We gotta, we gotta continue to work on that and get better at that. And, uh, yeah, that's definitely a focus for us. And your spot in the power play or magical point, I guess, is that right circle and Ethan's is the opposite side though. What's the key to finding those areas in the power play? Uh, I think, uh, well, Ethan might know a little more about that than me. He seems to find that spot pretty well. But, uh, no, I think it's just um, trying to be a threat. And, uh, you know, Coach always talks about moving downhill, going to the net when you get the puck, and that makes you more of a threat. And uh, when you're a threat to shoot, uh, sometimes that opens up passing lanes, and then you can set other guys up and vice versa for Ronnie if he's on the other side or whoever it is. Um, so, yeah, that's probably just seems like teams are being more aggressive in the penalty killing this year have you noticed that uh yeah maybe a little bit you know I'm sure that after putting a 30 percent power play up last year they uh key on on some things um you know but uh when you're on the power play if you're getting aggressive pressure that can open up other things because you've got five guys they've got four you know so uh maybe maybe so maybe more aggression but um, that should open up more plays, you'd, you'd think. As I recall last year, your power play was kind of in the same situation as it is this year, and then all of a sudden it just took off and you guys dominated. It seems like you were scoring every time you went on the man advantage and finished number two in the nation. So do you see that perhaps developing here? Yeah, I do. I think uh, as long as we're creating uh, repeatable options like – uh, Coach Fershweiler likes to use that phrase, you know, uh, getting those chances, they're going to go in. And it's just about creating those chances. And, uh, you know, they don't always go in, but uh, when they do, they, they fall in numbers for sure. You've got a veteran team, but so does St. Cloud. All these guys are back that went on to the Frozen Four a year ago. It's just night after night in this league. You're playing talented players that have been around. Yeah, it's a great test for our team. You know, uh, we have a lot of similarities with St. Cloud in terms of uh, guys coming back. And, uh, you know, obviously they had a very successful year last year. Um, and so, yeah, like I said earlier in this league, you got to be ready to go every night. Any team, if you don't play a full game, it's going to be a tough night for you. We're midway through November. Uh, who's got the best mustache on the team so far? Well, it's not me if you got – 10 times zoom on that camera, he might not be able to pick it up. But uh, uh, Cedric Fiedler, for sure. I mean, the thing just looks so good on him. Like, I, it would be weird to see him without a mustache.